everyone. Here is our illusion. Welcome back to WebGPU Fundamental Tutorial. Last week, we learned four different ways to manage resources in WebGPU. We also tested and analyzed the performance and usage scenarios of these four different ways. Please check the history videos if you haven't watched. In the following weeks, we are going to learn textures, materials, and the related technical knowledge of lighting and to enrich the styles of our 3D scenes. And today we're going to learn some basics of textures. So what is texture and why do we need to use this? We have learned fragment shader, so we know that GPU displays is actually rendered the color of pixels one by one. But in general scene, it is difficult for us to set the code to assimilate the color information of a complex scene, such as those uh, irregular patterns and the materials in the real world. We can simulate these patterns by programming, but it will be very expensive for GPU. So we can't achieve real-time rendering. So most of the time, we're going to use the external image resources to display the complex lighting materials, patterns, and other information. So textures is actually to stick the content of these pictures on the surface of the object. So how does the GPU match the plane coordinates with the pixel positions in the picture? Firstly, let's understand the coordinate system of the texture. Let's take a normal 2D texture as an example. In WebGPU's uh, texture coordinate system, the upper left corner of the picture is the origin point 00. zero. Right and down are the positive directions, and we generally use U and V. To accommodate different texture sizes, in this UV coordinate system, the width and height of the image are normalized. That is to say, the lower right corner of this texture is 1-1. One, one. So how can we locate position and set the size of this texture? Let's take an example here. If we define the UV coordinates of the upper left corner to be 1-0, then it is corresponding to the position in the right, uh, upper right corner of the original texture. And point one one is corresponding to the original lower right corner, and so on. So if we set this coordinate system, then it is actually a horizontal flip. Similarly, we can change the UV coordinates to get a vertical flip display. Apart from this, we can also zoom in and out of the original texture through the UV coordinates. For example, this one, the coordinates are taken from one quarter of the upper right corner of the original texture. If we set the coordinates value over one, then we can achieve the zoom out. Then here will be a problem. So what do we do with those blank areas? To solve this problem, WebGPU and modern graphics APIs have a address configuration. The default is Climb to Edge, which is to replicate the pixel information at the edge of the texture. If we take this 5x5 black and white picture as the example, we will repeat the contents of the last edge pixel horizontally or vertically. For example, the edges here end up being white, so horizontally this area will be white. And in the same way, the area below will repeat the black edge and the whole texture effect at the end looks like this. Besides, WebGPU also provides another two configurations, for example, repeat, which means the part beyond 1-0 will repeat original pattern, and the other one is mirror repeat. As the name suggests, we'll do a mirror repetition, and this is the final effect. In practice, we can set the horizontal and the vertical direction separately to use different address configuration. Apart from this basic scaling, in the real scenario, we can also change the perspective view. 
This will result in different change on the set of texture. Then let's think about this. The coordinates we just said uv coordinates is the continuous space from zero to one, but we know that the image pixel is discrete. And image itself has the original resolution, so the texture in the end we show also has the corresponding resolutions. If these two resolutions are different, then how we match the specific pixel information? Now let's talk about the sampling and the resampling. Sampling means the size or frequency of the outputs is inconsistent with the original data. Let's take an example here. So in this image, we chose a 4x4 pixel area and the original pixel content is just like this. Both corners are black and in the middle is white. And we need to zoom in to 5x5 pixels area. Then there is no way for each pixel to correspond to the original ones. And some pixels in the middle is segmented by the original image. So how to deal with these pixels? And the same thing is when we zoom out, for example, result in 2x2 two two image. Then we can find out that 4 pixels is shrinked into 1 pixel. So should we show this black or white? Actually, this process has been finished in GPU. And we just need to apply a filter. So for now, in WebGPU, we can directly choose two sampling methods to handle this change. And we don't need to implement the sampling process ourselves. So the first filter is nearest filter. This method is very simple. So after scaling each pixel, we'll form a new coordinate based on the UV difference. Like the first point will be 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Then if we find this corresponding coordinates in the original texture, it will probably be the upper left corner. So we copy this pixel color as the new one. Similarly, the second point also selects the second pixel in the original texture, which is close to VV coordinates. It is also black. If we encounter an intermediate value, for example, this coordinate, According to their coordinates in the original texture, it is exactly between these two pixels. Generally, in graphics algorithm, we will do a roundup. That is to say, the white pixel has a larger x coordinates, and this color will be selected, and the same for y axis. As for the bottom two pixels, we apply with the same algorithm, so these two will be black. And this is the final image looks like. And the algorithm is also true for shrinking. We find a new coordinate according to the UV coordinate and to do a distance comparison. So for the first pixel, we have four pixels surrounding in the original texture. And we will choose the white, which has a larger coordinate. And the final pixel will be a black. So this is the final result. And we can see from this, if we apply this proximity strategy, and the color of the edges will be obvious, but the arrow is also relatively large. The advantage is the strategy is simple, so the GPU computation is not expensive. So this is a performance-first scaling method. Let's introduce another method, linear filter. Firstly, we also find the corresponding coordinate position at the original texture. But this time we chose four surrounding pixels and to get a weighted average of these four different colors. So for example, the first pixel, we have three black and white white. And white pixel is at the furthest, so it has the smallest proportion. In this case, the first pixel will be a deep gray. In the same way, the second point is still mixed with these four colors, but this time it's closer to this white pixel. So the proportion of the, the white will be increased a little bit. 
and in the end uh, we'll get a light gray. And if we apply this method to every pixels, then we can get this final result. And we can see that this is a big difference between these two filters. The process of the linear filter is a little bit uh, complicated and is uh, more expensive on computation. But in terms of the final effect, it is more in line with the original image. And the transition between pixels is more gentle. It also weakens the boundaries of the edges in some certain. But if we enlarge this picture, then the effect is very obvious. Nearest filter will give us a jagged feeling, also known as the mosaic effect. Well, the linear sampling is uh, the transition is very smoother, but it also blurred edges. So we can't really tell which is better or not. And in practice, if the texture only have a few color areas and it doesn't have the rich colors and the transitions, so we normally use the nearest filter. And on the opposite, we'll apply the linear filter. But it also depends on the specific scenarios and also the resolution of the original image. Some people may ask if there is any better sampling method. Uh, of course, we have many sampling optimization algorithms in graphics. But WebGPU only has these two methods built in, given the running efficiency of the GPU. But we can implement the other optimal sampling algorithms ourselves in the shader. Compared to the complex algorithm optimization, increase the resolution of the image will be much better. People who are interested can study the specific process of these two algorithms after class to check the difference between zoom in and zoom out effects of different pictures. Okay, that is all of today about the theoretical knowledge of textures. And in the next video, we will learn how to create textures in WebGPU. To display the external multimedia resources such as pictures and videos. And welcome to subscribe our channel. I'll see you next time.